this is the last Conversations with Daughters of season two. And in season two, um, our, our president, Nancy Severin, has welcomed us at every one of these. We will have her for our last presidential welcome. And then we'll be talking about the next season of Conversations with Daughters when our new president, Jane Searcy, will be welcoming us. Welcome to Conversations with Daughters, episode 11 of season two, as Carol so eloquently put it. Uh, we are delighted to have you join us this afternoon, especially um, with all the summer travel and with uh, the Summer Olympics being televised. So we appreciate your time. Our conversation today revolves around Triennial 2024. And if you were able to attend, we hope you will share your experiences with us. And if not, we have plenty of opportunity during the next hour to answer any questions you might have about exactly what a triennial is all about. I will begin with the prayer of the order. Let us pray. O Eternal Father, you have sent us your Son to teach us things pertaining to your heavenly kingdom. Give your blessing to our order wherever it may be throughout the world. Grant that we, your daughters, ever may discern your truth and bear the cross through the battles of our earthly life. Give us strength to overcome temptation and the grace to work for your kingdom and to gather your scattered sheep within your fold. Grant upon us the seventh gift of the Holy Spirit that we may always remember it is your work we are called to do, that all we think, we do, and say may be pleasing in your sight. Yes. For his sake, our King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're going to turn now to our president-elect, Jane Searcy. Welcome, and I'm excited to talk with you all about Triennial. Um, I want to share with you the Triennial Prayer written by our president, Nancy Severin. It's a beautiful one, and um, I don't think I will let it go until the next Triennial. Let us pray. God of every grace and blessing, our true source of joy. Fill us with the energy of excitement and holy expectation. Surprise us with the wonder and splendor of a new dawn that we may be open to the future with all of its possibilities. Letting go of the time-worn and letting in the timely, may we bring the best of ourselves to this new day. With renewed resilience, may we breathe in the expansiveness of your will for us as we join together, beholding a new horizon of hope. This is the now of forever. For his sake, let us embrace every moment. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Jane. And uh, we'll be hearing from uh, both our, our current president and our president-elect as we're going through these, because uh, this is what it is. This is a conversation that we've had with daughters. Now, I will tell you that uh, what I did during um, uh, Triennial was that I went around and recorded a bunch of conversations that I had with daughters. So we're going to be seeing at least some of them here. Um, and I will tell you here that some of the uh, conversations went really well now when you watch these i would suggest that you uh don't necessarily focus on the mouth because light speed is a thing and so the the audio and the video may not uh sync up it just kind of depends on where you are in the uh, uh in the bounce of the satellite back to you so um these are all uh, as um, loud as I can make them. So you might want to uh, 
work with your own volume on your computer a bit, but uh, there is some crowd noise, but they are captioned. So you should be able to, uh, to see what's going on. All right, tell us who you are. And I'm uh, Chesley Bowden. I'm from the Diocese of Southwestern Virginia, former National Council member and board person and advisor to Christina Jackson. And I am at Triennial 2024 and New Day Dawns and loving it. And what I love the most is these flowers that were given to Carol Townend for her uh, service to her <laughs> province. Five, I believe. I'm probably three. But um, she asked to interview me. We were talking about CWD, you know, conversations with daughters. That and we are now having a conversation. CWD. Yes, we're having a conversation. So that's, and now conversations with daughters at Triennial. And this will be our next CWD. And I got to tell you, Chesley is a fantastic cheerleader. She, she will be positive beyond measure um but she's also a very very busy woman immediately after this she was tapped by someone else and had to run and go take care of something and we just never got back to the rest of the interview so that's kind of how things went for us here at at triennial some things went great um, good afternoon. My name is Lori Henry, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm president of our DOK chapter at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Atlanta. Okay. As a DOK host, I welcome our members. I assist them with finding their workshops and any other questions that they may have. Is this your first triennial? No, actually, this is my fourth triennial. So we still got stuff ahead of us. What are you most looking forward to? The gala on Saturday night. <sighs> And sometimes we had some technical difficulties. Your names and where you're from, chapter, etc. So go ahead, tell me your names. I'm Gail Staten, and uh, we're chapter seven, and we're from St. Catherine's Vienna Episcopal Church in Missouri City, Texas. Excellent. Providence. Providence. Yes. And I'm Jane Whitney, also from St. Catherine's. Excellent. Catherine. This is the first Eucharist on Thursday morning. What are you most looking forward to for the rest of the time? Uh, to be amongst. And that's it for that <laughs> uh, video because my, uh, my camera glitched and I just didn't uh, know that until later that evening. The rest of my uh, uh, mm. videos did not go well. So, um, I wanted to take a moment um, to just talk with everyone about the DOK host and such. Um, so one of the things that happened was that uh, our, our triennial team had those, uh, the DA, DOK hosts everywhere. They were in the the airport when people were arriving they were around everywhere and you could spot them do i happen to have someone who was a host here ah i got janet janet go ahead unmute and and tell us real quick what was it like being a host oh it was a lot of fun can you hear me yeah perfectly okay, great um it was really entertaining to meet all these wonderful women and to meet the public wearing our wonderful little hats. So, I mean, what can I say? Just meet and greet and have a good time. Yeah. Um, Joyce, you just raised your hand. Were you also a host? Yes, yes, I was. And, and I loved helping. I loved talking to everyone. It was um, uh, one of the other members of our chapter from Grace in Franklin. It was kind of amusing to us because we get lost when we go around the block, but we were able <laughs> to help people find their rooms um, where they had their classes or whatnot. Um, it, yeah. it was a lovely time. And you know, one of the things I loved the most was the pop-up music that was just here and there. I loved, loved, loved that. Excellent. Susan Benjamin. 
you had something to, to add. Yeah, I was host. I was asked to come in to um, to greet the international daughters, and um, had an incredible time. It was just um, being with everyone. I think that was probably the best three days of you know the pre pre triennial was so important. Um, seeing everyone and greeting everyone as they came in the door. Yeah, yeah. being in hugs. It was, you know, I was the hug hug person. Yeah. Okay, Ruth, we're gonna go with you, and then we'll get back to the videos. It was wonderful. I was at the airport a lot, and um, the volunteers there were wonderful, and we all had on blue, and we had on the fascinators and the name tags, and people would come up. The people at the airport began to think we worked there, <laughs> and you would we were in trouble. But people were so good and so gracious, and helped the people come in and took ownership. One lady had not been there before and she was over there directing people out to taxis or to Uber. And somebody seemed a little confused and one person in a wheelchair. She took them out to the van, waited with them there in that hot air and you know how that was. And I was just <laughs> so delighted and pleased and thankful for all the daughters and their spirit of hospitality and taking care of each other. It just was one of those wonderful things that started training off with a bang for me. Excellent. Hey, and what better witness to the rest of the world than having daughters visible and helping? I mean, that's exactly who and what we are. We're there to be uh, God's hands and feet in the world. So Cynthia, real quick, and then we'll go back to the videos. Go ahead, unmute yourself, dear. Okay, yes, I just wanted to say that um, I was one of the people that Ruth helped at the airport. I was with uh, our um, daughter's sister when she, when she was there, and it was just so wonderful to see um, a familiar face and to see the lovely fascinators, and I'm a witness to the help that you gave, Ruth. It made us oh. feel so much more um confident that we could navigate ourselves with the wheelchair and the rollator to uh the taxi and to get to the hotel so thank you so much it was wonderful that sounds like something we need to put on the list to have at the next triennial okay here we go back to some more conversations with daughters tell me your names and where you're from and what your chapter is my name is linda fluger and i'm from Trinity of Escondido, California. I'm Sydney Breeze Lowe, also from Trinity Escondido and National Secretary. <laughs> okay, what are you guys looking forward to? The camaraderie of women. Ah, excellent. Meeting new friends and getting reacquainted with old friends and just having a blast with my fellow sisters. Thank you, thank you very much. Your full name and where you're from and what your chapter is. Well, my full name is Judith Paulus. And I am from jo um, I live in Georgia, and my chapter is Mary Mary Sandra chapter in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Looking forward to at well, at uh, Triennial. Well, actually, everything, but I'm especially looking forward to the workshop with Dr. Marvin Short. Oh, excellent! Mm -hmm. I look forward to being part of her workshop again. I heard her in Baltimore at the Baltimore Triennial. And so I'm happily looking forward to that. I will tell you now, Judith was such an enthusiastic conversator um, that she found someone else and, and uh, brought her into a conversation later. So you'll be seeing uh, Judith in a little bit as well. Um, did anybody, uh, well, of course, did anybody, does anybody have any comments about any of the workshops? Joyce, go ahead. Well, as we were making directions, sometimes we didn't make our workshops on time, but the one we did uh, were able to attend was the one Reverend Maria Elena about work at the border. And that woman has an amazing, amazing, amazing amount of energy and compassion. And she was very open and loving, gave us her phone number, gave us her text. I mean, just anything that, that, so we can help her help other people. And um, it was, moved us to tears many, many times. Excellent. Go ahead, unmute, and tell us what you have to say, Beth. Oh, she's got her fascinator on. We, um, most, I was with the group of um, 
welcoming people who welcomed people as they came in the door. It was fun because we got to see people who were coming for um, the voting for the next bishop. So um, we got to see some of the people coming from all over the world. Um, one of the ladies that, that um, was also in a wheelchair had a problem trying to get around. So I just took it upon myself to bring her over to the desk, get her a room, found out the room had a bathtub that she couldn't get in to take a shower. So brought her back down to the, the desk and said, no, I think I, at that point I called and said, do you have something that, that is a walk-in shower maybe or a handicap? Yeah. So, they found her a room. So I was glad I was able to help with that. Yeah. Um, it, it was I, I got to Go ahead. I'm sorry. It was wonderful seeing um, everybody there. I especially liked the province dinner and um, the gala. And uh, yep. um, I, I can't figure out which presentation I liked the most. I think they were all fantastic. <laughs> we won't ask you to... Uh to name a favorite it's kind of like asking you to name a favorite child mm -hmm. so okay a couple more uh videos and we'll see how we're doing here tell me your name where you're from i'm brianna heiberger i'm from uh i live in northern indiana but i go to church at saint john the evangelist in flossmore illinois in the chicago diocese all right you are a first timer here to Triennial. Yep, it's my first time. I uh, just became a daughter four months ago. What were you expecting and how has it been different than what you expected? Well, the business part is pretty much what I expected. I was at the diocesan convention, so that kind of prepared me for that. And then, um, yeah, the workshops have been really interesting. It's been great to meet everyone. Like, everyone's been so warm and welcoming. And, yeah. Yeah. So one takeaway that you've got so far? I mean, we're only halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, I mean, community is important. Yeah. And really uplifting and valuable. And, uh, um, yeah. My name is Brenda Thurton. My diocese is in Los Angeles, Christ the Good Shepherd Church. I am originally from the city of Oh, excellent. What are you looking forward to at Triennial? Training. I want, you know, I'm interested in a couple of the trainings that they're having and to meet people. Okay. You said you had a takeaway. Tell me about it. So my takeaway was when I attended my first triennial, which was in 2000, and I thought it was so good that any daughter should at least plan on attending a triennial once in their lifetime. I look at it as Mecca for daughters. <laughs> so at least once in their lifetime. Um, if you can go more often, then go more often. But you know, the workshops, the teachings, the gatherings, um, the sisterhood is just awesome. So we had a first timer and we had uh, someone who is looking forward to the, the teachings, the training. And we had uh, Phyllis who suggested that every daughter should go. So any reactions to, to those? Hi, I was a little late in, in getting my hand up, but what I wanted to talk about was one of the reactions to the, the workshop. Uh, Joy James Williams did a workshop. I was one of the actors in it. Actually, we had actors. And it was about Samuel and Penina and Hannah. It was just fantastic. It, you know, I never I got such joy in, in, in just doing that that I've heard I had heard about the story of Samuel and read about it. And now I'm reading it again because it just brought brought it to life. And, and for us, that was very rewarding. Excellent. Thank you. Helen, I see you. Hi. I have to say that I truly enjoyed the triennial. It was the first one that I ever attended. And I agree that if anyone can attend, it's an excellent thing to attend. I appreciated and loved the whole experience. And so... I'm looking forward to the next one because they're going to have it in Phoenix, and I'm from uh, I'm from the um, T 
chapter, my chapter is St. Matthew's Episcopal Church, which is just outside of Phoenix. Uh, Susan, Benjamin. I wanted to let, you know, I, I have to have a shout out for Beth Pitts. She was one of the people that were, was downstairs with us and just made it such a, a joyful time for those of us that were sitting around sometimes without a whole lot of daughters there. Uh, sometimes we just had just a, such a great time oh, uh, laughing and sharing. And I, I, I really think that she was, she made it, um, made it much nicer. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> see, this is how we can have conversations. Going back to chat. Let's see here. Migdali said, I have never been to Triennial but they're all inspiring me to plan to attend. And Vicki said, that's the goal. You'll love it. Okay, we're going now to Elsa. Elsa, tell me, what has been, what, what is your takeaway for up to this point on Friday? From my takeaway is um, as daughters of the king, I am coming out. Excellent. Has there been one big moment that you will take back to your chapter? I think last night, um, hearing the firsthand account of how life is in Haiti right now was incredibly moving. Mm -hmm. And um, I will take that back and hope that our chapter and our diocese can um, find a way to help in Haiti. Uh, what is a highlight that you've had so far in Triennial? Want to start? Well, uh, besides listening to our speakers, um, I especially enjoyed uh, Father Ron, Father Rhett yes. today. His, what what's the takeaway that you're you're what, taking back to your chapter? I I have hope. I believe that we can go forward. We're going to go rise up and go forward. We can grow our chapter, bring more people in. I feel energized that that's a possibility. Oh, that's great. How about a takeaway from you? Well, I think just meeting all, all these different sisters from all over the country. Yeah. It's really nice to meet people that you have not seen before or people that you've spoken with on the telephone. Now you can put a face and a name together. I think this is really wonderful. It's, it's, fun. it's lovely to see people feeling so excited about being here. Name and Virginia chapter. Tiffin, uh, Holy Comforter, Angleton, Texas, Diocese of Texas, Province 7. I am look I'm looking forward. This is my seventh triennial. And I look very forward to Triennial because I get to see people in person instead of the box. And it's just so much fun to see and connect actual warm touches of God's face. I don't know what Virginia means by being in the box. What do you guys think? <laughs> Virginia, thank you so much for that. Um, Anybody else have a, a uh, uh, quick thought about being in the box versus being face-to-face uh, -face and being able to get a hug at Triennial or at any other assembly? I think there's nothing else like it. Um, this was my ninth Triennial. Um, at my first Triennial, I met Phyllis Larson. And um, I will never forget Phyllis Larson. And she was one of the first people I saw coming into this triennial. And it was just like magic. Triennial had started for me. Um, it's so nice to be with other daughters and not be in the box and to do a few things that are outside the box. And um, I hope that we did that at this last triennial. Yeah. How about from a first timer? What was your impression walking in to Triennial? This was my first time. This is Glenda. Yeah. Uh, I was very surprised. I just cannot believe the colors and the people and everybody greeting you and hugging and just having a good time and 
seeing people from my province that I hadn't seen in, you know, a year or so. It was just beautiful. It was absolutely what, wonderful. What province are you, Gwendolyn? Province, province three. Cool. Yes, it was very, very nice. Just warm. I felt so blessed while I was there. Like there wasn't a stranger in the house. Everyone no, no. was a sister that you could yes, talk to at yeah. any time. Yeah. I have to say that I enjoyed meeting uh, a lady that went to Israel with us. Her brother goes to St. Matthew's in Chandler and she went with her brother and it was so nice to see her at the triennial. Oh, good, Helen. Thank you. Now we're going to hear a little bit from someone who gave a workshop. Where you're from in your chapter. I'm Teresa Newell and I have a daughter at large. Uh, I affiliate with the uh, Christ Church Jerusalem chapter because I work there at times and work with the uh, organization there. Uh, yeah. Tell me about workshops. Uh, I will be doing two workshops this afternoon on uh, the foundational work of the Bible in the order uh, and what that meant to the early, uh, our founder and, and to the early um, work in um, the order and how important the Bible is. Excellent. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Yolanda Patterson Seawright. I'm from the Diocesan Assembly of Alabama. True. What is it that, that you think you're going to be taking back to your chapter? Oh, I'm going to be taking back to my entire diocese because I forgot to tell you I am the di current diocesan assembly president. On my Blessings way. on you, but sister. I'm... I plan to take away um, some more joy, some more good times, some more learning from here to encourage all daughters to come to a triennial and experience it experience the, not just the fellowship but actually the learning the teaching the sharing um, the evolution of, in some cases of your own personal spirit walk um, and to make connections with other daughters to learn other ways to learn new things um, or to actually maybe reaffirm what you are doing and go and do it bigger and better and strive to be stronger in your prayer life and your evangelism especially and also in your outreach. This is what happens here at Triennial where we learn and we share and we sing and we praise and it's free and it feels good and you can take that back to your parish and hopefully infuse that into it. I think that Yo said absolutely everything that needs saying that that is exactly what triennial is for, is to fire us up and send us back to our chapters, to our diocesan assemblies, to our churches, just the excitement, the sharing of who God is and who we are as daughters. Any comments on, on what Yo had to say? Go ahead, Adrian. Adrian Blunt from the Diocese of Washington. I'm the Diocese President, Washington, D.C. I was so happy that we sat with people from different provinces when we were delegates. You know, we we weren't sitting just with people from the province. Mm -hmm. uh, we were sitting from people from all over. And I really liked the idea of uh, taking the triennial from one side of the country to the next. So everybody has a chance or is close to uh, a triennial at one time or another. This was my third triennial. Nice, nice. Ruddle James. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. I was most impressed with the work of the International Daughters, particularly the lady I met from Germany who's gone to Uganda, and what they've done for those ladies. Uh, and I've been to four or five triennials. I heard somebody mention 2000, that was in Colorado, and that was really heartwarming. But what I get from it is a spiritual uplift. It is a spiritual experience for me, and it reminds me of what I ought to do. That sounds familiar. 
Lord, what will you have me do? That's that to me is one of the hardest and best prayers. So, yeah, I was with the altar guild and we had set up for a certain amount of people, especially when the junior daughters were going to present. We were so happy to see so many daughters who were supportive of the junior daughters and came out that oh, morning. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that a great service? It was. Oh, I uh, I got to watch them rehearsing for a little bit and uh, just their enthusiasm. In fact, that is a really good uh, lead up to our, our final conversation here um, with Kendall. So what is has been so far a highlight for you of, of the triennial? Of the triennial? A uh, highlight of the triennial would be um, getting to listen to all the like different people from different parts around the US and the world. And like how many, it's cool to see that in some countries there's like almost like 5,000 members of an organization that you're a part of like across the world so i think that's really cool that's very cool um and you are going to be transitioning from a junior daughter to a senior daughter right i i already oh you already yes. transitioned yes. so you are a senior daughter now yes. what was that transition like for you what, why did you transition i decided that um when I saw people transitioning at the triennial in 2018, I thought it was really cool that like you could transition and be a part of the organization. Like, I like I'm 18, so I thought it was cool that at 18 I could be with like the senior daughters and get to see like a different, whole different part. And I think a lot of people don't realize that you can transition at 16. It's cool to be able to move from junior daughters to senior daughters mm -hmm. and that now I can be a part of the organization like for the rest of my life. <laughs> Excellent. Is there anything that you want to tell to current juniors? Current juniors. Yeah. Because um, you were a junior for a while, right? Yes. Yeah. I think that it's really important that you transition when you're young because then like I get to see, be a part of the senior daughters for two years even before I go to college. And then I'm excited to find another church um, and be a part of their senior daughters. So you're, you've got the foundation. Yes. Already before yes. you go off yes. somewhere weird. Yes. Excellent, thank you so okay. much. I, I love what Kendall was saying that you know not only was she excited about being a junior daughter but transitioning at 16 so that she could get the foundations of being a senior daughter before she goes off to college that was wonderful any comments that that we have because it's time for you to to uh join in more with this conversation and just let's talk about what triennial was for you or what any of these uh, conversations were like. Go ahead, Susan Benjamin. Carmen, I wanted to share, um, I've been going to Triennial for a long time. And I really think that um, as we go every three years, you know, we, we work really hard in our chapters and in our churches. And I think we get discouraged and coming to Triennial re-energizes us and lets us know that yes, we are an international order. And there aren't just a few of us that are in our chapter. There are more of us that are of like mind and um, we're all sisters. And I think that's the best thing about trying it. Yeah. Uh, Lindley, I'm gonna pick on you for a minute, Lindley Cole, because uh, she put in the chat, I presented my report to my chapter, St. Luke's Atlanta at our meeting this morning. It was so much fun reliving the whole thing. I got emotional as I told them of the way we shouted, let's pray now, as the delegate from Haiti asked for prayers. That was a moment when, it, it for me, that was daughters. That, that was exactly who and what we are and what we do. Anybody else moved by that moment? Go ahead. Thank you. And, that was just, and I didn't, I didn't see it coming, but as I was telling it this morning, 
I kind of lost it. Yeah. But that was really one of my highlights. There are very many, but that one, I wanted to share that one in particular with my chapter oh. because it speaks so much about who we are and to see it in in real time happening. Yes. Is a real something the, for me. Thank the you all. Feeling of the Holy Spirit moving among us and saying, let's pray now. That was wonderful. All right. Can I also say something? Um, sure, Lily. So someone just said something about sitting at different tables. And yeah. I, I would like to shout out to somebody named Vivian in New York. And I met her at a table. She's 97. And she's been a daughter for 47 years. And well, I think she... Amazing. It, <laughs> she, I, I think, well, we had Vivian Lund from Chicago and, and she's 97. So I wonder if maybe it's Chicago then. Yep. Yep. Can, she's, can she is part that? of the, uh, the St. John Naperville chapter and definitely a, a solid person. Sorry, yes. Pleasure yeah. to meet her. Thank oh, I love also. Vivian. She's great. Uh, Terry Stein, you have your hand up and your hand up. <laughs> and then Mute Joyce myself. will go to you. I have never been to a triennial, but from hearing all the conversations, I really want to go to the next one. Excellent. Thank you. That is, and one of the things for my first triennial, my, uh, I had just become a daughter and my diocesan assembly president suggested have a jar and put 50 cents a day in it. And that way it is a slow but steady way to save towards tri triennial. And, and uh, I still have that jar. So <laughs> I also have um, Corliss March Wise. She said, as a first timer to triennial, it was high energy and saying to myself god is surely in this place great meeting other sisters in christ yeah one takeaway was that the junior daughter service so moving to see our youth witnessing for christ so engaging uh, i just love the theme a new day dawns i couldn't get it out of my head thank you so much for that corliss uh joyce go ahead one of the shout out i'd like to give is for the prayer room the prayer room was amazing you walked in there and there was no doubt that the Holy Spirit was there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was so much talent and work. And and it, it's one of those silent things that, that people don't always see or talk about because it is just a silent presence. But it was amazing. It was wonderful. I saw it used a lot. Um, and, and it was so good just to have a place to go and be quiet and be aware of of what god is trying to get through all the rest of the noise i really liked that room that was a good one other thoughts other other impressions from triennial cynthia muse oh yes um carol thank you so much for for mentioning uh or sharing with us how you saved that 50 cents because i that i was i raised my hand because that's what i wanted to mention um i am so interested in having us continue to encourage daughters to attend triennial. Um, mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say that we need, it It would be wonderful if at some point we could share some ways that we do prepare financially because it can be, it can be expensive for some. Mm -hmm. It can. And uh, I will tell you that I got uh, some support from not only my diocesan convention, excuse me, my diocesan assembly, um, I got financial support from them. So there are uh, definitely different ways you can uh, get information and, and support from your chapter, from your church, from your diocesan assembly, from your provincial assembly. There are always steps and ways um, to start looking at how to make this financially affordable for everyone. That's that's the point. So um, yeah, I, I know that there are other people who, who uh, did various things in various ways. We can't do a fundraiser, but we can ask. 
And, and I know that uh, diocesan assemblies and provincial assemblies all have money set aside for scholarships, not only to the local assemblies, but also to triennial. So make sure that, that you take a look for at those possible avenues. Avenel, you had something to add. Yes, I'd like to say a hearty thank you to the sisters who prepared the prayer chat. That was very welcoming, very uh, just a place to spend a few quiet moments. Mm -hmm. And it worked out greatly for me, especially because a close friend died while I was at Triennial. Mm -hmm. And it was just a place to go to and say some prayers for a while. So yeah. again, I'd like to just say thank you very much to the sisters to prepare that. Thank you. That place was covered in prayer. Um, before everything opened, uh, there was a whole troop of people going around and praying over each different place. Nancy, could you tell us a little bit about um, how that worked and, and what it was like? Each triennial is a little bit different, but basically because of who we are and that prayer is the center, we want to make sure that every place is um, prayed for, is blessed. And we not only bless the spaces, but we also bless the people that will be in those places. And we bless not only the daughters coming, but we bless the staff, the hotel staff, the waiting staff, all those who are working in whatever capacity to make our time there um, as well as can be. Because as you know, there were a few glitches, both in technicalities and in um, the, getting the spaces prepared. And so those prayers came through when we needed them the most. Absolutely. Every, everyone was so gracious even when there was so many difficulties to overcome, everyone was so gracious and I appreciate every single kind word that was uttered. Yeah. Um, I noticed in the chat that Edith Wilkins said that she was planning to go uh, for the first time, but her husband was diagnosed with cancer and so she couldn't go. He's had surgery to remove cancerous tissue and praise God he seems to be doing well. And here is where I just feel the spirit work. We contributed to send a member of our chapter to represent us. That is another way to be involved with Triennial. If you can't go, ha helping another person go is just, that's the way we are. That's who we are. As a first timer, Jan Anderson said it was sort of overwhelming. Um, any other first timers agree with that? <laughs> um, flight was delayed, but there were five other daughters on the same flight. Um, it was not only my first triennial, I was the only one from my entire state. So I did not have anyone I already knew to tell me the stuff I did not know. Um, Jan Anderson, would you please uh, just let me know, did you find uh, anyone to hang with? Did you make some friends there so that you didn't leave not knowing anyone? I just wanted to say that uh, I was the, probably the last one to leave, uh, getting <laughs> out of the, the hotel. And as, as I went downstairs to my car for the last time, um, the bell staff stopped me and said, we just want to tell you that this was the nicest group we have ever had at this hotel. They said, please. They said, thank you. They were kind. They were loving. And they prayed for us. And one of them said, they prayed for my legs and my back. And I don't think they hurt anymore. Um, and, and he said, and if they do, I don't care. Because they were so joyful. They just made me happy that, that they were here. So um, joy shows. And mm -hmm. our love of God shows, and those people want us to come back. Wow, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, Jane. Uh, go ahead, Sharon. Um, good afternoon, everyone. 
I just want to uh, give a quick shout out to the security staff there at the hotel. Yes. Um, we had a medical emergency in our little in our our group, and they were uh, they were very very helpful. They stood by us the whole time to make sure we, you know, we got the uh, help that we needed for our, our our sister daughter who was having an emergency. So, and every everybody everybody there was very helpful, and and they all asked about uh, and cared about what happened to our daughter when she got back when I got back. Um, yeah. So I wanted, to, but they were very professional and but very, very kind, very kind to us there. So. I had such a wonderful time in, at Galt House in Louisville. It, it was a beautiful place. It was a very warm and welcoming place. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing that, Sharon. I will let you know one thing here, and that is that our next conversations with daughters, Jane um, has asked me to continue with conversations with daughters. And we're going to try a new day and time. Um, we're going to try Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern because I uh, one of the things that I heard at Triennials that uh, 5 Eastern on a Saturday is often an impossible time for many. So for the first six months, we're going to be trying um, a Monday at 8 p.m. So it'll be the, the first Monday of every month except we didn't do the first Monday of September because that's Memorial Day, but or Labor Day, excuse me. Look for conversations with daughters early in the month, first Saturday of the first Monday of the month at 8 p.m. Eastern. And the first topic will be your new national council, who we are, what we're doing, and how you can get a hold of us so that you can go right to the source to answer questions instead of having to go through, say, like the national office and then having them get a hold of us. So um, we'll see how things go. There won't be a conversation with daughters in August, but there will be um, on Monday, September 9th for season three, episode one. And so now let us close with our motto. For his sake. I am, I am the one, one, but I am the one. one. I cannot, I cannot do everything, do everything but I can, I can do something. something. What I can what do, I, can I ought do, to do. What I ought, to, what I ought to, to do, by the grace of God, grace of I will, God do. will do. Lord, Lord what will you have me to do? do.